Before you come into the UK, these are some of the things I would advise you do or you consider doing before you come into the UK. It's not compulsory. It's not like you have to or you must. But these are things that if you do them, they will be life-saving. They will be very useful. They will be of help to you when you come into the UK. This is a requested video. Thank you to the person that requested this video and I hope you enjoyed this video. The first thing I'm going to say is before you decide to move into any part of the UK, I know we don't have a lot of resources for someone like me i came to the country or to the part of the country i came blindly it is a phase of learning in my life but one thing i've learned since moving to the uk is that you need to research where you're going you don't need to have someone there to be able to research i know some of you usually send me questions like do you know somewhere in england do you know this place i've never been to those places for the fact that i live in the uk does not mean i know everywhere in the uk or does not mean i can tell you or judge the whole town especially if i've not lived there so you may not have a lot of resources about that place you're coming, which is understandable, but at least you need to go to Google, check where you're going. You know, you've gotten your work. I think you must have gotten your employment by the time you're knowing where you're going to be posted. So you want to check the location of your workplace to the location of the houses you're going to be having. Go to Google download google map and type from to you don't need to be in the uk to use google map go to your google map type where your house is and your destination will be your work look at how many minutes it is to where you're going where you'll be traveling every day do you, will you need to drive will you need car are there closed bus stops those things those information you can find them on google map you can find them online if you have children you want to consider is that environment is it what i want is it a city is it a town is it a village if you've got a partner most especially and their job is mainly those jobs that you cannot do in the village you want to look at the fact that do you want to consider you moving to the city because of your partner because if that is where they're going to get their job is it worth it even if they're having even if they will have to travel to the main city how many minutes will it take them how many hours you want to check those things on the on the google map and it can give you by bus by cycling by walk or by car check those things before you decide to take a place i know by the time you're getting a job interview and then you're being interviewed you've gotten the job you're so excited the only thing you just want is just get to the uk you're not thinking about those things but when you now get to the uk the reality of life will now hit you i know we are so desperate i can relate and i understand because i was in that shoe before but the thing is you're very valuable you don't know it. you're very very valuable as a registered nurse or as whoever is coming to the uk your value they're not doing you a favor by bringing you to the uk you are also doing them a favor both of you are doing each other a favor so you should also have a say in deciding what part of the uk you want to come and you should research well into them and the best is even best when you know somebody who is already in that area or who is already working in that your job they can give you the first hand experience from them watch videos go online research what language they speak i know you may think everyone in the uk speaks english everyone in the uk speak the same way but it is not true every part of the uk has got their accent if somebody from glasgow speaks i know the difference from somebody from edinburgh i know the difference from somebody from aberdeen the way they speak i know the difference from someone from england i know it's another island ireland they speaks really really differently everyone in this world has got an accent has got the way they talk i've got their food i've got different things if you're the type that loves your African food, you want to decide where you're going. Are there Africans there? Is this somewhere you can actually lay a hand on African food? Or will you need to travel everlasting to get them? Those are the things you have to research and to find out before you decide to move to a place or before you decide to take a job. Once you start thinking of traveling abroad, I will advise you to please improve your skill. Look, do you know how valuable having your skill is? Someone sent me a message and is asking me, she said she wants to learn, is it hairdressing or makeup? She wants to learn something and she's asking me if she should go ahead before coming. I'm like, yes, why not? Why will you not go ahead and learn your skill? Skill is one thing nobody can ever, ever take away from you. No matter how educated you are, you may not work with your certificate, but with your skill, it is your asset. Look, the things I'm learning in the UK, if I had known, if I had someone to make this type of video for me before I came, I would have gone to enroll myself in. Because when I was working in Nigeria, I had 
days off you know when you do night shift sometimes i may be on night shift for seven days and i'll have seven days off those seven days i had house help i had everyone helping me those seven days i would have used it to enroll myself in either makeup school either cooking school either baking school either gilly school either something the only thing i remember i was interested and i took advantage of was learning how to drive and it really helped me because i was able to use my driver's license for one year once i got into the uk not to come into the uk things like that like learning how to drive if you think you're going to drive except you don't want to ever drive because driving lessons in the uk are very very expensive so if you already know the basic you already know how to turn your hand you already know how to put a brake on you need to do you've known those things it will be easier for you to be more cheap for you when you're now coming to the uk you don't need to start afresh paying some like when i, I had a lesson driving lesson two hours was 65 pounds imagine and it just for me i was already driving I've, i was driving already for one year by the time i started i wanted to go for for my exam you know what i mean and then just for me to drive around for two hours i'm the one driving not the teacher i'm the one driving and then i have to pay somebody 65 pound calculate 65 pound an error and know how much you need to spend if you're having to learn to drive from the scratch so i would advise you if you think you have ever drive in the uk to learn how to drive when i learned driving in abuja the maximum amount i paid what i paid then was fifteen thousand naira. sincerely speaking i paid so fifteen thousand naira, and that fifteen thousand naira, i was able to finish my lesson so imagine you coming to the uk to pay 65 pounds for every two hours so it is better to have the foundation of driving in nigeria if you want to learn how to bake learn how to bake i'm just wondering imagine that your girl knows how to bake i'm a professional baker and i have a youtube channel and i'm doing baking videos easy it is what i know how to do already like i do my birthdays i'm looking for people in my office who knows how to bake and i'm paying them the cake i made for my husband and my daughter on their birthday i sure i'm sure i showed you the video that cake one was 30 pounds the other one was 25 pound converted to nigerian money that's what i paid for those two small mini chukuchuku chuku, chukulu cake so imagine you know how to do this thing you know how to make gilly you know how to 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 make hair i'm always kind of like hair because i'm not good at making hair i've never made hair in my life until i got to the uk i had to start learning from youtube and then i have a baby girl who i cannot be bothered going to the salon even from where i'm living to the salon is 15 pound for me to get my head done the hairdresser you book appointment then i'll transport going alone is eight pound coming eight pound so going and coming i'll spend nothing less than maybe 15 pounds then i will now pay 50 pounds to make my hair imagine if i've already had this knowledge to go and learn how to even if it's not to go to salon and go and learn for two weeks before i came to the uk that would have been of great advantage for me even in the uae the same thing like every country outside your country you will have all these minor minor challenges so if you are able to learn these skills before you come into the uk they will be a very good advantage for you it can be hair making driving sewing makeup repairs cooking online business baking balloon making photography it can be anything like any skill at all if you have the opportunity learn it if you don't use it today you don't use it tomorrow one day even if not for any other person outside your family for you for your children for your family for your friends for your colleague this may be helpful and it may be a source of income for you these are things i wish i knew before coming to the uk one other thing i'm going to tell you before you decide to pick your bag and get excited about coming to the uk we have a lot of mentality as much as i respect our culture i believe you're going to have reorientation when you get into the uk and if you're someone that is not receptive of other people's religion other people's belief other people's idea you're going to have problem you're going to fall out try to rehabilitate yourself try to be open to criticism be open to learning be open to a different life i'm not saying you should come and lose all your value or your culture i'm just saying you're going to see things differently from different angle and it's going to be a shocker if you're someone who is very rigid who does not listen your way or no way if you're someone who does not take no for an answer if you're someone who doesn't want to learn that people speak differently people eat differently people believe different things people are more receptive in some way they have different sexuality different religion you're going to have problems so you should learn or you should start understanding that you need to be receptive of people's belief receptive of people's idea people's culture i know what i'm talking about because I have been through it and I know 
things I've heard and things people back home, even things I believed when I was back home. So we need to learn to be open to new ways of life, new idea. And as bad as it sound, pocket your spirituality. It's better not to even talk about it than bring it up and come and start causing problem. You know how you we at home think if you're not going to this church, you're going to hell. If you're not going to this, you're going to this. If you're not this, you're something you're going to, if you wear earring, if you do this, if you you know. You have to be open to other people's understanding, other people's way of life, and pocket your religion. You know, back home, 5 a.m., somebody can decide to wake up and start knocking bell and be shouting, accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. All the mocks will start shouting, Allah, Akbar, things like that. If you come abroad and you start to impose your religion on someone else, you're going to fall out. You're going to have problems. You need to respect them. I know you want them to understand that your religion is the best, but you need to be wise. You need to respect their own belief as well. If possible, just leave it out of the discussion. Just leave it out of the topic. Preach Jesus through your character. Preach Allah through your character, through your attitude. I've actually spoke about the Bible to someone, but he was the one who asked me. And the way he asked, I make sure I was very polite. At the end of the day, it's like, I really, I really, really understand what you're saying because he's an atheist. I really, really, atheist mean he doesn't believe in any religion. So I said, I, I really understand what you're saying. Okay, Gloria. But you have to learn to be wise and not just come out as, you know, the way we used to come out with religion back home. Be ready to improve yourself. Improve your skill, improve your understanding, improve your knowledge. See, don't always use the, the let me say, black card. Don't always use the racist card. Don't always bring it out at every opportunity. We have a lot of opportunity to learn abroad, you know, because people maybe abroad, I don't know, for some reason, the educational system is different from our own educational system. In Nigeria, you are the one who we have to apply for admission. You have to pay. You have to do this exam, do that exam, and beg to go to school. But here, they will beg you to go to school. Like, you may apply for a school and then you see them phoning you. Hello, are you still interested in the admission? Are you this? They are encouraging you to go to school. So it will work differently. So we have upper hand, upper opportunity. We have somebody who has not got college degree, who has not got BSc, who has not got master's we read. If you have those things, it's also an added advantage, not just for you abroad. But when you go back home, you know you've achieved something. Imagine, I just thought, I'm like, I've been out of nursing for years. Why won't I go back to school? And I've decided to go back to school. Like I mentioned in one of my videos, I've gotten admission. Learn to use this opportunity. Online learning is very, very effective abroad. So use those opportunities to improve yourself academically, improve your knowledge, improve your skill. Take advantage of those opportunities. Sometimes you get scholarship. You can do it even while working as long as it is not going to stop you from working part-time. Take those opportunities, use them, and use them for the best. And when you're even a permanent resident or you're a citizen, the best, you can decide to do anything you want to do with your life. So take advantage of all those opportunities that will be presented to you. Because in the UK presently, you know all this racism thing that try to make sure there's equality so if there are like 100 whites they want to make sure there's at least 34 blacks so these chances are usually available ask questions nobody will come and ask you Gloria do you want to go for your masters do you want to go for your BSc Gloria do you want to be enrolled in this you are the one who should ask don't always say oh, no because I'm this they will not accept me don't always use that card try to ask questions improve yourself nobody will ask you if you don't ask the question Try to improve yourself, improve yourself, and it will not just be beneficial for not just yourself, but for your whole family and for your own integrity. Take advantage of all this opportunity you have abroad. Finally, I'm going to say, make up your mind to represent not just yourself, but your family, your country, and your eternal generation. Imagine you're the one that comes abroad and work in a particular place and then you're the black sheep of the whole place. Everybody thinks whoever is from your country or whoever is your color, whoever is your race, whoever is from where you're from is bad just because of your attitude. Please remember to represent not just yourself. I know you're going to have bad people. I've made a video about co-workers from hell. You will have co-workers from hell. You will have people who will be against you even without even knowing you. Even knowing you, they'll just see you and they'll hate you but as much as possible. Try your best to be your best version. So 
you have your own self-respect within you you know you've done your best and then you can lay good example and leave the place a better place for the next people coming i wish you good luck in your endeavor i hope this video has been helpful to you in one way or the other if it has please remember to smash the subscribe button if you're not subscribed it is free of charge and it's really appreciated i'll see you again in my next video on today stay safe and i wish you good luck in all your endeavor take care of yourself i'll see you bye